Hey guys, today I'm gonna talk about the time I saw a card go from 200, $225 plus to one cent buy list. And that is what the current card is buy listing at today. And it is the Broodmate Dragon. So Broodmate Dragon was a card that you could only get from, at one time, you could only get this card from the free pack at Walmart. The free pack has free random booster packs, mostly non-valuable ones in the current set, as well as the one promotional card, which in this case was Broodmate Dragon. You would know that you get the promotional card because you could see at the front of the package. There was no mystery as to what your promotional card was. And this card was selling for, it initially began selling for 125 and then eventually ramped up to 200 As you can see, this guy bought a mint copy for $194. And the card was released en masse two years after it originally surfaced. So there was a two year period that, that no one had this card. It was one of the most wanted in high demand promos in existence because you could only get at Walmart, but it wasn't just any Walmart. It was that like very similar to the tiger stocking promo. Some Walmarts had them and if your Walmart had them, your Walmart had 20 of these. If your Walmart didn't have it, it was like the 99% of the other Walmarts. So if you hit, you hit big. So if you grab 20 to 40 of these at 200 plus dollars, that's $8,000 in one. Well, I mean, you do have to pay for the package, right? But the booster pack should be able to cover that cost. So you heard legendary stories online. I was trying to find one of people who found 40 copies of this and they made $8,000 overnight. It was the first time I really felt that magic could have been a lifestyle. It could be more than just a hobby. It would be something that you could live off if you were good enough and lucky enough. Because after this event, there was the Hellvolt event where some people had demonic judge demonic tutors worth 200 plus dollars and each Hellvolt contained 40 of them. So that was another $8,000. And that wasn't the only time this type of occurrence happened, right? So people were buying this promo for $200. Then it was released en masse to every single Walmart. The price plummeted from $200 to $5. And the people who purchased this, there is a psychology term, sunken fallacy. They began buying more of it in the hopes to level off its price. As you can see this person, I'm saying that this after having exactly the same thing happen to me, except that I paid more for my dragon and I never spent a penny for another one. And they're chasing bad money with good money, but it's my Moby Dick. I'll get revenge on that damn whale. So all the people who bought it for 200, they couldn't give up on this concept because this was a $200 card before the mass reprinting. I've never seen a card drop from 200 to $5 in a day because every Walmart stocked them at the same day. You had a lot of individuals invested in this card trying to stabilize the economy, just very similar to how legacy players are trying to do it now. And they just started buying up all these things. They would buy, they would go to every forum and buy the card up trying to raise it. And Walmart would just put more out there. It was the saddest, it was the saddest MTG finance thing I've ever seen in my life. And before you guys ask, no, I didn't have a copy of this card because it was $200 and I was a poor grad student. Not a poor grad student, but I'm not gonna spend $200 on a, a card like this. So lesson learned was you, the t good times are good, but the bad times will come. And that's currently where we are in MTG finance. It is incredibly difficult to make money from speculation or selling on trade. Like, one of the biggest misconceptions, I've said this many times, is when someone says, oh, I have 200 copies of this card. Accumulating 200 copies of a card is very difficult, very time consuming, uh, there will be loss, and selling 200 copies of a card is very difficult for an individual. Yes, if you're a store, yes, if you are someone like Dariums and you're someone like Rudy, you, that's your job, but for a hobbyist, my job is not to sit home and sell magic cards, right? I, a developer and I own my, my own marketing agency. So like, that's my job. 
My job is not to go to the mailbox and send stuff. So anyway, this one, and in one case, they bought it for 250 euros. And fortunately, the card was just reserved a couple of weeks before it flooded eBay. So I did not pay for it. So now I'm quite reluctant to buy an unreleased promo. So 250 euros, the guy didn't want to sell for that because it was unreserved. That was the situation at hand. What's 250 euros? That's like $300. 194 seemed kind of cheap a week before. Let's just say that this card was selling for $300 and the person didn't want to sell it for $300 because it was worth more than that. You have a scenario where people got absolutely destroyed because those people had multiple copies. Those were the type of people who would, okay, there's only, let's say there's 100 copies out there. If I own 50 of them, I can raise the price of those 50, a la Craig Berry. So that's exactly what a lot of speculators are, have done in the past. They have tried to, in a card that there's not many of them, they have tried to accumulate a large amount of them and then drive the price for each one of those so then they could sell one copy into the wild. The card today is 88 cents. It's buy listing for one cent. Again, a $300 card going down to a one cent buy list, I don't think you can get more crazy than that. That's definitely the craziest uh, MTG finance story I've ever heard. And it's still pretty recent, 2013, so four years ago. You have a lot of winners and people will always tell you what cards they speculated on and what cards, oh, they will always tell you, oh, I bought this Black Lotus for $20 back in the day. Maybe the Black Lotus wasn't worth $20. Maybe you overpaid for it and got lucky and now the Black Lotus is the Black Lotus, but it could have just been easily, Magic Gathering could have just easily flopped and it would have been another card game. Maybe it was a net deck runner. I've never played that game, but I heard it's very good. So someone leave in comments if you actually own the game. I heard it's good because you can buy the whole card set and you don't need to buy more than that. That's very appealing, right? If you own the whole collection. Unlike Magic where you just gotta keep buying, which is not great. This is a, the Walmart promo to end all Walmart promos. There has never been a $300 Walmart promo and there never ever will be. And there's never been a card in my memory that is $300 and now you, you, can't, you can buy this for a penny. That is the most a vendor will pay you for this card currently. So many people got absolute, I mean, wow, that was... So you can see the, the buy list market price for foil with only come in foil is a penny. The, uh, my experience with MTG Finance is I have been playing Magic since I was in elementary school. I've seen a lot of the finances. I have lots of boxes and stuff. Like people tell you to buy Origins boxes. I can tell you that's incorrect. I've never seen if, uh, I've never seen a set less valuable than Origins, not named Dragon Maze. You can get a fat pack of Origins for $23. That tells me all I need to know because Dragon Maze, you can get a fat pack for $20, right? And I'm like, huh, why is a fat pack this cheap? And that indicates the casual appeal. So fat packs are, in my opinion, better indicated than boxes. I don't really know how many boxes are out there. I don't know how many, like, second, I don't know that information. But for fat packs, I, I can tell from the store, right? Hmm, interesting. Fat packs are an easier price point. So if someone has... Uh, as a casual player, there's likely to have $40. They're more likely to have $40 than to spend $120 on a box. The same can be said online. So when I see Magic Origins fat packs for $24, $23, Shadows of Innistrad is $24 right now, a fat pack, I know something, is, I know it's not a good set. I know it's not a set I want long term unless I like this set. I own a few cases of them, but I'm only using them for draft, not for investment purposes. And so the question that you guys have is how am I making these analysis? A lot of times I don't really explain it that well. It's just that I've seen all these scenarios happen over and over again. How did I know that the Zendikar fetch lands would be so valuable? Well, I saw the Onslaught fetch lands and they became valuable. And then I knew that the Zendikar fetch lands at the very least would just be a replacement for the Onslaught ones. So, but then Modern took off, that I didn't expect. So history repeats itself, right? What is the next Broodmate promo? I don't know what it is, but I guarantee you there's a card that is super expensive right now and it will be a penny buy list in the future.
this happened. But I've, this is a very interesting story, right? It's almost unbelievable. A $300 Walmart promo becoming a penny. <laughs> wow. Bye, guys.